Colonel Chambers showed us exactly how these aircraft do that. In this video declassified for 60 minutes, a group of insurgents in Iraq had just ambushed a U.S. convoy. They were trying to get away, but the predator was watching. This is a hot gun. And what do you mean by hot gun? Well, it's literally, in this, in this scene, white is hot. Uh, and that white spot that this guy is carrying is actually a hot gun. It's, so it's been fired, and we already know that it's been used. We've met positive identification criteria that these are bad guys. And so now we can go ahead and strike these targets. Do you believe that predators and reapers are changing the face of war? When we can take uh, 34 airplanes and we can have them airborne all the time, and they can look at whatever we need them to look at. That's a huge capability. And so because of that, the enemy has to do things differently now. They have to hide more. They don't know when we're looking at them. They don't know where we are. The pilot's aerial view of the battlefield often allows them to see the enemy before the soldiers on the ground can. Lieutenant Colonel Goff gave us an example of how he once used this advantage to expose a suspected sniper. So we called down to the convoy and said, hey, how about if you start your engines and just move 10 meters for me? What and, happened? And as soon as they did that, uh, this individual reached out and pulled the rifle out. So uh, you knew? We were in short order, um, able to engage that individual successfully. With alleviate, what? Uh, with the Hellfire strike. What if you get it wrong? We don't. Ever? That's a tough question. Uh, yeah. We have the resources to make sure we're right. Uh, in battle, in combat, the fog and friction of war, there are always going to be times that, that your judgment isn't. With hindsight, you could see things with more clarity. But you're not there in the fog and friction of war. You're sitting here in your cockpit in Nevada. And that's what makes us more powerful and, and have that clarity. Because I'm able to distance myself from the fight. and use resources that are otherwise unattainable to, to the combatants. In spite of that clarity, unmanned planes and Air Force jets are criticized in Afghanistan for killing innocent civilians, including an incident just this week that's under military investigation. Across the border in Pakistan, where the CIA operates, they're blamed for even more deaths. The CIA wouldn't talk to us about their operations, but the Air Force argues that the ability of these planes to sit over a target for extended periods makes them more precise than piloted planes. We got a sense of that when the Air Force let us sit with Predator pilots in Nevada while they kept a close watch on U.S. soldiers along the Afghan-Pakistan border. What you're looking at is the image from the Predator's infrared camera as the pilots watch a Chinook helicopter offloading troops. This is happening in the dead of night, so on the ground it's pitch black. The Predator crew in Nevada was tasked to watch over the soldiers as they got some rest, pulling guard duty from half a world away. It looks like they're all in sleeping bags. Those large white spots they're looking at are the soldiers' sleeping bags. The infrared image is so sensitive that once the soldiers are inside the bags, the image can distinguish between the cool sleeping bag and the soldiers' warm heads, those black circles that you can see poking out of the top of the bags. The crews spend hours studying suspected insurgents. They've just seen these men ambush U.S. troops. The pilot can take them out and still make it home in time for dinner. We joined Lieutenant Colonel Goff one morning as he headed to work to ask him what that's like. To go at work and to do bad things to bad people is, and then when I go home and I go to church and try to be a productive member of society, those don't necessarily mesh well. Does it feel strange compared to being deployed? And yeah, when you drive past Las Vegas and you look down to the strip uh, and turn the corner and head north to, to the base, uh, you know, you're leaving one world and you're going to the other. You know, we go from being parents and, and spouses to being warriors. Colonel Chambliss and his wife Linda have been juggling that lifestyle for two years. It's sort of like being in a movie that you can, you know, you wake up at home and have breakfast with the wife <laughs> and head to war. Mm -hmm. It is a bit. Once you pull the cockpit out of the airplane, then whether you are 50 miles away from the airplane or 5,000 miles away, it really doesn't matter anymore. 
it has become central to the way we operate. General Norton Schwartz is the chief of staff of the Air Force, its top military officer. As a system, do you see anything um, that has done more damage to Al Qaeda? This, this is probably at the, at the head of the line. In 2006, the Predator played a crucial role in hunting down the most wanted Al-Qaeda leader in Iraq, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi. Here's the way it goes. You had 600 hours of Predator time over, over a lengthy period. Following Zarqawi. Following Zarqawi. And then you had maybe six minutes of F-16 time to finish the target. It reflects, again, the power of the unmanned systems to produce the kind of intelligence that leads you to a guy like Zach Harry, who who was very good at maintaining his anonymity. Colonel Chambers told us he thinks the power of these unmanned planes is just beginning to be tapped. Next year is going to be a watershed year. We'll actually buy more unmanned aircraft than we buy manned aircraft for the first time in the Air Force's history. The Air Force has had to call on their National Guard and Reserve crews to meet the growing demand for these planes. And they're looking for a new generation of pilots who are willing to give up flying at the speed of sound. Once you get over the fact that you're not climbing up a ladder and, and getting into a cockpit, this is so much more satisfying because you know every time you fly, every single day, you're having an impact on the ground. So you wouldn't go back to flying fighter jets? I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't.